This is my Speedway 5 initial overview and 200 kilometer owner report. I am the actual owner. I'm not being paid by any company and my videos are not monetized on YouTube. I purchased the unbranded no logo version for $1,289 on AliExpress. It's the same scooter just without the stickers and mini motors logos. Now I'll do a quick rundown of the major specifications of the scooter. It's a dual power max 3600 watt BLDC dual hub motor, a 60 volt 23.4 amp hour battery. Manufacturer stated maximum speed is 65 kilometers per hour and their stated maximum range is 80 kilometers. It has 10 inch tubeless tires, front and rear disc brakes both with regenerative braking and anti-lock brake system. The scooter weighs about 31 kilograms and has a manufacturer stated max load of 120 kilograms. And here are the manufacturer stated charging times and my experience was that's pretty close to what I was getting on the chargers. Next I'll go over to the P-code settings and the LCD display. For the display you have the main window, you have the mode button, power button, and settings button. And each of those I'll show in detail in a video and kind of walk you through how to operate all of those. Now I'll briefly go over all of the individual P-code settings and show you my values are the ones in green. P0, 1, 2, and 3, those are default from the factory based on the type of scooter you have, so they advise you not to mess with those. P4 is miles per hour, kilometers per hour. P5 is whether you want to kick start or throttle start. P6 is cruise control. I always keep that off. I recommend new riders keep it off. Basically how the cruise control works is after continuously holding the throttle at a certain speed for seven seconds, it automatically engages if it's turned on. P7 is how aggressive the scooter starts. I have mine set at three. Gives you a nice pull, but it doesn't rip your arms off. Um, I would suggest maybe starting at three and then adjusting from there. P8 is the maximum output, which will affect the top end of the speed. I have mine set to 100. If you wanted to limit it, if you had a younger rider or for local speed laws, you could do that adjustment here. The battery save mode, which can impact the top speed if you don't have it set to three. I keep mine on two and that's a good trade-off for me. I get, I'm averaging about 66 kilometers per charge and that's with 20% left on the battery. PA is the strength of the electric brake. I have mine on three and it's still pretty catchy. I would suggest starting at two or three and then adjusting it from there as you get used to it. PB is the LCD brightness. I have mine set to three. PC is how quick does the display shut off? I think default on the mini motors was five minutes. I set it back to one. And then ABS settings, I have mine off. So if you want anti-lock brakes, you could turn that on. I've never tried it and haven't have really had a need for it. So that's basically it. Now what I'll do is kind of show you a video and how to operate the menus and go through the settings. Okay, to turn on, press and hold the power button. To switch the speed modes, this is on mode three by default. Just press the dot button. The mode button toggles between time, which is the ride time, not actual clock time. Trip meter, odometer, and voltage. Now to enter into the program settings, you press and hold the mode button. And then to toggle between the different program settings, single click on the mode button. Then to change a value in the menus, you use the dot button, single click for this. And then for something like this that goes to 100, you can press and hold and it'll go quicker. And to exit the menu, you just do nothing. Just sit there, it'll automatically exit out. And the settings are saved on the, uh, when it exits out of the menu, you don't have to click anything to confirm it. And when you're done, press and hold the power off. Here are the dimensions of the scooter when it's unfolded. 
and these are the dimensions of the scooter in the folded position. Notice that it's actually longer by 30 millimeters when it's folded. The deck length is pretty long at 22 inches or 55 centimeters and gives you ample variety of foot placement and really helps with the comfort of the long rides. Likewise, the deck width is more than ample for foot placement. The deck to handlebar height is a comfortable 38 inches or 96 and a half centimeters. I'm six foot tall and here's a picture of me riding the scooter. It'll kind of give you an idea what the position will be like when you're riding the scooter, give or take your height. I pretty much use the scooter daily on my six kilometer round trip commute to the gym. Speed and acceleration are perfect for in town and it handles any hills I can throw at it. Acceleration for the most part is pretty smooth all the way up through the throttle range. It does pull the arms a little bit with the settings I have, but it's not extreme. The max speed I hit was 37 miles per hour. And for me, speeds much above 30 miles per hour on this scooter, they tend to make me feel a little bit nervous. The scooter doesn't shake or wobble at those speeds, but it's just my comfort level. And I average about 66 kilometers per charge, and that's with 20% left on the battery. The Speedway 5 is equipped with front and rear manual disc brakes with electronic braking and ABS. I found the brakes to be adequate for my driving style at 30 miles per hour. I averaged 18 to 20 feet on a stop. The hill climbing capabilities of the scooter are excellent. I've yet to find a hill that it can't handle and then I'm not accelerating when I reach the top. I haven't found any super extreme hills in my area, but if you want to see it in action, head over to Wrong Ways channel on YouTube. I'll put the link in the description below, and he's got a killer hill that he uses to test it on. And while you're over there, be sure to give him a like and a sub. The dual air spring suspension does a pretty good job of smoothing out most of the bumps on smooth or semi-smooth surfaces, but the larger bumps and transitions between pavements, you will feel those a bit on this scooter. But overall, I feel it's really comfortable to ride, even on longer rides. I don't feel tired or I don't feel fatigued from the bumps. The road tires actually perform fairly well on gravel paths and dirt paths, assuming they're well maintained and not muddy. You definitely can't go as fast as you would on the road, but it does a good job, so if you're into doing trails, you probably can do it okay with this scooter. The scooter has a headlight, three brake lights, two on the side and one on the rear fender. It also has rear facing turn signals with an audible alarm. The tail lights are barely visible during the daytime and at night they do provide a little bit of visibility. The turn signal is pretty much worthless day or night. I apologize for the poor quality of the video, but the only thing I have to record is a GoPro and a 361R, and I think they're equally as bad at night. The headlight does a much better job of getting you noticed by cars or other vehicles on the bike paths. It actually does a pretty fair job of illuminating what's in front of you, assuming you're not traveling too fast. However, for this scooter, I would recommend supplemental lighting, flashers on your back, and probably a better forward-facing bike light. To fold the handlebars, lift up on the handle grip and then push on the slider and repeat the process for the other side. Next, release the stem locking clamp. 
Then slide the top portion of the stem down. Then pull out on the folding lock pin. When the handlebars get close to the rear fender, turn them slightly to the left or to the right, then listen for the click of the locking pin. That way you know you've got a good secure fold. For this next section, I'll kind of briefly go over the nuts and bolts that I've observed that tend to come loose with extended driving. I like to check these things every 50 kilometers when I first get a scooter. That way I have a good feel for what comes loose and what doesn't. The bolt that needed the most tightening most often was the swing arm bolt, and this is a critical one. It was about every 50 kilometers or so this bolt would need tightening. I will definitely be putting Loctite on this one. Number two critical one that came loose quite often was the folding pivot bolt. I will also be Loctiting this one now that the review is complete. My number three is not critical for safety, but it is one that came loose quite frequently, which are some of the bolts around the rear fender. I will be Loctiting this as well, but I'll be careful not to get any of the Loctite on the plastic as it can damage it. Number four are the bolts that hold in the shock absorbers. They didn't all come loose at the same way at the same time, and this is something that I'd say needed to be checked maybe once every 100 kilometers. And number five are the axle bolts. I really only found one after 200 kilometers that was just a little bit loose, but Loctiting these and checking these on a regular basis I would say would be critical. After 273 kilometers, those were the five main areas that really needed constant checking and tightening. I mean, I'll be going over and pretty much lock tightening every bolt I can on this that doesn't come in direct contact with plastic. So now I'll try and wrap it up and give you some of my final thoughts on it. I'd also like to throw it out there that if there's something specific that I didn't cover that you'd like to see, please leave a question in the comments below and if I can't answer it in the comment, then I'll make a little video. Overall, for me, this is a really great scooter. I am super happy with the purchase, and I have zero regrets. If something ever happens to this scooter, I will definitely be buying another Speedway 5 to replace it. So I'll tell you what my strong points are for this scooter. It's power, it's speed, it's range, it's handling, and it's ability to handle different road surfaces. The things about the scooter I felt could maybe use some improvements. Number one would be the suspension, and perhaps it's just my weight, but it's not the smoothest ride all the time. You do feel some of the bumps, so somewhere down the road I may look to upgrade the suspension with some spring shocks. The second area I'd like to see some improvement are the plastic covers on the four corners of the scooter. They don't really make a tight seal, so if you do get caught in a little bit of rain, it'd be pretty easy for some water to get in there. And third and final criticism is the square section of the handlebar. It just makes mounting anything there almost impossible. So that wraps up my owner report. If you choose the Speedway 5, I think you'll be happy with it. Best advice I can give if you're new to scooters, really do your research. Take a look at all the different types of scooters out there and then try and find the one that best fits how you plan on using the scooter. It's not about finding the best scooter, it's about finding the best scooter for yourself. Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you when I see you.